Hello, Sector Watchers. Welcome to this first episode of Sector Spotlight on this Tuesday, the 1st of October. This is your weekly update on sector rotation and anything remotely connected to sectors and or rotational analysis. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm your host for today's show. As I really would like to make this an interactive show, your voice is important. So I encourage everybody to participate in any discussions or ask questions, and I will try my best to manage and answer all your input through the various channels that are available. And you will see the various handles on the screen right now. Obviously, email and social media channels are open 24-7. The live chat is open during the show, and we will keep an eye on what's coming in and possibly answer as much as possible while we are on air. And while I am saying that, I'd like to introduce um, my help people, my support, my lifeline back at the headquarters in Seattle. That's Zach, who is the technical director, and Rachel, who will be helping me as a producer. So you'll, from time to time, uh, hear me talk to them or ask them questions. Anyway, the, uh, the handle's on the screen. You will know how to operate email. If you go onto one of the social channels, please be sure to make the right handle and watch out with the LinkedIn one because it needs the space. That's not one word for RRG research. What are we going to do today? Um, we're working our way through the intro um, and probably you have read, or I hope you have read one of my previous blogs and one of them was called, uh, What Do You Want From Me? And that blog, I asked people for input for this show and <laughs> I got some input. Some people even uh, went as far as say, uh, since you asked, and then I had like, I don't know, a gazillion uh, hints and tips. And they were all super appreciated. I, I really uh, thank you for that because it, uh, it, makes me, it makes it easier for me to know what I'm talking about. And I know that there is at least one person who's listening and who's interested in, uh, in that. Um, we'll go over uh, a little bit of that, what do you want from me in a minute. Then I'm going to look at a sector summary, what has happened uh, in the last month and in the last week. This is the first day of the new month, so it means that we got a bunch of monthly updates. We can do some monthly work. Uh, we'll work our way through that. And then um, one of the basic things is, the, is that people asked for education. So we'll, we'll try to fit in an educational piece uh, in every sector spotlight show. Uh, and then of course, of course, we're gonna put things into the RRG perspective. Honestly, I have no idea how long this is going to take. We've got 30 minutes. Uh, it could be that I'm running out of steam after 20 minutes and we'll then just go over some other charts or whatever. If I am talking too much and we can't figure finish everything, then we'll have something to, to work on uh, for, the, for next week's show. Now, what did people come up from uh, what they wanted from me? I think that the top of the list was education. And I understand that because RRG, although it is around for eight years now, 2011 it was introduced, it's about eight years, almost nine. Um, they're still relatively new. Not everybody knows them. They're not as popular as, let's say, trend lines or moving averages. So we will be uh, doing a lot of education and, and repeating and coming back to the, the various ways you can use RRG, the various ways you need to look at it. And then um, another thing that people wanted to see is long-term, short-term, and I'd say medium-term, like swing trade ideas. So there is a bunch of everything. Uh, my work usually is a little bit longer term, so I will try to cater for everybody. But the most stuff in terms of charts that we're going to be looking at will be weekly uh, and, and daily, not super short term, maybe some swing trade ideas, or if I see something that's really short term, I'll throw it in. Uh, but the, the general idea is to have some a horizon, an investment horizon from, um, I don't know, minimum of three months, a couple of weeks to, to three months and out. Um, the fourth item that people wanted me to focus on for RRG is uh, help them keep a perspective on the bigger picture. And I think that is the, uh, the most important thing that RRG was made for, is used for, and that's what I use it for. Keep an eye on the bigger picture. Since RRG was launched, uh, the tagline that we've been using is uh, RRG will help you to get the big picture in one picture. And that's exactly what it does. 
if they are available, and it's not, that's definitely not going to be every week, I, I can promise you that. But sometimes I do some research projects um, with other companies for myself, uh, for the research that I do for institutional investors. Uh, and that's like, what if, you know, if something moves from this quadrant to that, what are the results? How does that work? If, if this sector moves there, the other sector moves there. If we have something to share on that, then I'll bring it into the show as well. And there is a very good chance that I'll be bringing in something new next week already because after we are finishing this show, I'll be packing my bags and I'm off to Cairo in Egypt tomorrow to attend the annual IFTA conference, which has been held there. Um, I'll be stepping in and doing a small presentation on RRG on the first day because someone else uh, couldn't make it. And I'll be back. I'll be traveling back on Monday the 7th. So I'll be right back in time for next week, Tuesday show. And hopefully I can share some of my findings that I did for, for that presentation over there. If we're going to go um, to some of the basics, then... What is a relative rotation graph? Relative rotation graph shows you trends in relative strength or performance of multiple securities in a universe against a common benchmark and against each other. Now, I think that the most important thing that you need to be aware of is that they do not show relative performance as such. That would jump around the screen way too much. So what an RRG does is uh, showing you trends in relative performance. And in order to back that up, I'm gonna bring in um, some charts here. Let me bring that up. Let's bring up like XLU, because that's a sector that's doing really, really well at the moment. And what you see here is the price chart of utilities as well as the relative strength, which is simply the ratio between utilities and SPY and both RRG lines. And the most important thing that you need to note is that the RS line, it can be and often is completely detached from price. So this is a good example where price went up and relative strength went sort of sideways, which means that there were other sectors at that time in 2017 that went up even faster than the utility sector. Um, same thing here. Utilities wind up, we're flat, and they're only picking up very recently, and now we started to pick up even more. The RRG lines, the RS ratio and the RS momentum, are trying to pick up those trends. The red line, the RS ratio, is the most important one, and that will, when it crosses above 100, RRG says, feels, thinks that that particular security is in an uptrend. If RS ratio is below 100, RRG finds that it is in a downtrend. The green line, the RS momentum line, is picking up the speed and the rate of change of that red line. So when you look very closely, and let's, let's move to one other one, to technology. That's always a very nice chart to show. Um, it will pick up when these phases change. And let me bring it here if the red line if the if the green line crosses below 100 the red line has formed a peak a top as you can see if the green line crosses above 100 the red line has formed a trough as you can see here so that's the most important thing that you need to remind yourself of rs momentum is leading rs ratio rs ratio is picking up trends in relative performance if we now go back to the Oops, this one here. To the buildup of the RRG chart, we have the four quadrants. I hope, I think that most people are on chalk stock charts are familiar with that right now. The RS ratio is on the horizontal axis. The momentum is on the vertical axis. Everything that has a momentum as well as a ratio above 100 is in the leading quadrant. That's good. That trend is up and that trend is being pushed further up even more. We've just seen that that RS, rate, RS momentum line is leading. So the first thing that will happen is that that momentum will roll over. And when momentum rolls over, the green line goes into the uh, below 100 and red is still above it. We are in the weakening quadrant. These are still uptrends, but they're losing power. 
if that loss of power, that loss of rate of change continues, we will move into the lagging quadrant, into the lower left-hand quadrant. What you'll find here are sectors, securities, et cetera, that are in a relative downtrend, and that downtrend is being pushed further down by negative momentum. As it was on the upside, it's also on the downside. The first thing that will happen is that your momentum will curl up, your RS momentum will curl above the green line, it'll push above the green line, push above the 100, the green line will push above 100, and that will position a sector inside the improving quadrant, which means that it's still in a relative downtrend versus the benchmark, but that downtrend is starting to roll over and improve. And after a while, that improvement continues, and you will get that rotational picture that is so characterizing uh, for RRGs, for relative rotation graphs. Now, so far, a back to basics for um, the introduction of RRGs, back to basics. Let's jump to some actual stuff here. Uh, boom, you go there. And I need the other one. Da, 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 da. Oh, you go there. And now we can work from this one here. Here, top right, you need to go there. Thank you very much. Um, the tools that we'll be using are a lot of perf charts, a lot of sector charts. To get a handle on what has happened, I'm going to throw uh, a perf chart for asset classes to you. And this shows you the performance of various asset classes for the last week. Big difference, commodities tanking, and the best asset class was the US dollar, if that's an asset class. Real estate for sure is an asset class, and equities are still doing pretty well. Uh, losses are coming from the fixed income stuff. If we change that to 21 days, we'll be looking at the monthly performance, and that looks a little different. Uh, the month of September is actually a pretty good week, a pretty good month for stocks, up about 2%. And on the week side, we got uh, fixed income, IEF, so that's government bonds, seven to 10 year government bonds, down over 1%. If we look at the same setup for our sectors, we'll get this picture here. Last week, very, very weak for energy, pretty good for technology, staples, discretionary, that's weird, technology, uh, staples and discretionary, pretty much in the same uh, area of performance. Uh, and then we got utilities, commercial services, healthcare on the downside. Again, change that to 21 days and we'll get the month to month performance. Let me give you, this is what it did. Now the S&P is there as well. So S&P is up almost 2% over the month of September. Outperformance for financials, utilities, energy, materials. And then uh, the only sector that was down was healthcare. So, so far, an update on the performance of the various sectors. Uh, we're going into a break in a second. And after that, we'll be back with some monthly charts and some RRGs for the various sectors. And we're back. We're going to go over some chart lists here. And what I wanted to do is start, because this is the first show, I want to establish a longer term picture, a longer term view. So we're going to go uh, over some of the asset class charts. And these are monthlies. Uh, let me just, in order to speed up stuff, go over the 10 per page. That's easier for me to talk about. Uh, US dollar, I'm going to skip for now. Here is equities. And I, what I've done, I've got the um, adjusted and unadjusted prices next to each other. And you'll see that for SPY, that doesn't really make a big difference. For me, equities are still in a massive uptrend. Um, we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail. We're struggling with some resistance right now. But the longer term picture, this monthly chart is nowhere near bearish. If we go to IEF, and here you'll see, this is why it's so important to sometimes move to a unadjusted chart. Because if you look at IEF, that's government bonds on an adjusted chart, that looks 
super strong and super nice, and it is. But if we look at the unadjusted version of this treasury bond ETF, that you you see that it is actually testing a massive resistance around 114. So there is a little bit of a warning signal there. On the other hand, if we break about uh, above 114, that'll be super important for treasury bonds. That'll be a super strong signal for bonds. This is investment grade corporate bonds, sort of the same story. This is adjusted, looking really, really nice, but it has just broken out of a uh, trading range that lasted for one, two, three, four, six, seven years already. And we just broke out. So that's a, a very positive sign for corporate bond ETFs. Now, high yield is a different story. If you look at the adjusted, it, it looks as if this is a very strong, stable, rising market. Well, it is if you count in the, div the, the uh, coupons that you get while you do this or the dividends from this ETF. But if you look at price, it's in a, it's in a, it's in a long trading range going up and down. So investors in this high yield stuff, they're primarily benefiting from the coupons and the dividends. The price didn't do them much pleasure. Commodities is really a dog. Um, that is down and sort of sideways since 2016. I have it in my asset class universe. And sometimes I think, you know, this is going to go for the moon and then all of a sudden it drops back again. So um, I have decided that for me to become really, really interested in commodities again, I think it just needs to take out this upper boundary of that range that is just about 25. And that'll take some time because as we just saw, commodities are tanking again this week. Um, very, very dangerous. I don't even want to think about what's happening when it breaks below 20. Um, and then we have the real estate sector. That's been doing super nicely over the last few weeks. It's showing up in all the RRGs in the leading quadrant, doing really, really well. But if you look at the unadjusted version of that chart, and it's logical because uh, real estate is a sector that really thrives on dividends. V dividends are very important for real estate stocks. And you see a, a completely different picture. And then you see that that real estate is pushing against this overhead resistance level, um, let's say around 92 and a half, 93. We're struggling with that right now. Remember, this is a monthly chart. So this last bar is just a couple of hours trading only. So we're, that, that we we're going to ignore that right now. And you know, we, we cannot say whether this has been broken or not. We have to wait for another month. The benchmark that we're using for um, the asset class RRGs is VBINX, and that's a Vanguard balanced index fund that consists of 60% in equities and 40% in bonds. Uh, obviously, there's a super high correlation with the S&P 500. So this image looks a lot like the, the S&P 500. Uh, again, just like the S&P 500 is in a long-term uptrend, I do think that this bank balanced index fund is in a long-term uptrend as well. Now, that finishes the, the asset class overview. And let me uh, put that on an asset class RRG as well. And that's actually available in your dropdown. So if you go to the RRG page and you select the top one, because RRG likes to work in pyramids and what likes to work top down, you can see the asset class RRG right here. And that's what we're looking at. Now, look at the one that is in the lagging quadrant. It is SPY, it is equities. We have just seen that that long-term trend for SPY is pointing upward. If we move to uh, the weekly charts, we will get a little bit more granularity and we will get uh, more detailed views. I need to switch to my, uh, where is that? My weekly, here you go, weekly charts. So if we go over that, and I'm just going to pinpoint a few that are super important. Um, oh, go on. That's, that's nice. That's good for a show. Uh, we're talking about asset classes, and I'm opening up my sectors already. That's just going a little bit too fast. So VNQ, where are you? I'm going to bring up VNQ. Uh, that's super nice. I needed this one here. Sorry, guys. Starting up problems. 
V and Q. Here you are. This is V and Q, and we need the default view for that with the RRGs. I am pretty sure that when I prepped this, I had everything at 900 bips, so it would show up. But we'll do it again, and you can see how easy it is to make that change to all these charts in that list. There you go, Vanguard. And you see how good it is going with that RS ratio curling up and RS momentum curling up. So in terms on the shorter term and that, that, that monthly stuff that we've been looking at is super long term. We're looking at now here weekly RRGs for me is a time frame that's that that should give trends and signals that last for uh, a minimum of three months, something like that. 10 to 12 weeks at a minimum, but very often they last much, much longer. Now the ones that I am looking at here right now is V and Q because it is a, a very long tail. It's shooting right up and that's what we're seeing here on that on that uh, price chart. So the real estate sector is uh, one that you should keep an eye on right now. It's a little bit more defensive together with IEF. Um, we'll bring IEF into the picture here. And as you can see here, that relative strength is bottoming out. It's in a range, it's bottoming out. The RRG lines are picking up that improvement in relative strength versus that benchmark, VBI and X. And um, we're, we're pushing up there to a, to a new uptrend. So the, this RRG tells me that right now for the shorter term, uh, you should prefer bonds over equities. It's a little bit contradictionary with the longer term picture in the monthly charts that we've been seeing. So I'll be keeping a very close eye on that rotation. Uh, but the fact that SPY is the only one moving into the lagging quadrant and IEF and corporate bonds are in leading while high yield is at a positive heading inside improving and real estate is shooting off to the races. Um, it's, I, I think we at least should take this as a warning signal. If we bring on SPY here, then that against itself, that's not gonna work. So we need to fix that against PBI and X. That's this one here. Now we're looking at SPY versus PBI and X and we'll see that um, the market, the stock market is having trouble with that 301 level, that 3000 level in the S&P 500. Again, the longer term picture, if that 300 level breaks, that is completely confirming that longer term uptrend. Right now, we are at least having trouble with that resistance area around 300. Um, today's bar is start, we started positive, but we're moving into negative territory right now. And you see that the RS momentum line has started to curl over a couple of weeks ago, mid-September mid already, and it is starting to go down. So nothing super major here. But if you look at the RS line, you can see that it is in a wide trading range and the RS RG lines are trying to pick up those trends. Uh, and it looks as if we have just tested the upper boundary of that range. And we might now go to for a test at the lower boundary, which sort of sinks in with what we see on the price chart. We've tested that. Uh, and that's a massive resistance. And it actually got more, uh, more heavy resistance just the couple, last couple of weeks. Uh, when it didn't break through, and we're now on our way down, we're, we're facing some sort of gap support, intermediate support around 293, 290, 293. If that breaks, we could go a little bit lower. Again, all within that longer term time frame of a rising stock market. Um, we have five more minutes, which is excellent because then I can go over the longer term picture for the various sectors. So I'm going to open up the sector ETF here which shows you the 11 sectors of the S&P 500. And I can bring here my sectors on a weekly basis. And we'll see again, here you go. I think that I forgot to hit update or save at some stage because my... there you go. All, all. I actually got a very good cue. We are wanting to uh, 
take your input. So I'm going to bring, uh, I'm going to ask Rachel if she can bring up really quickly the Slido chat box and I can take one or two questions um, uh, and see if we can have a very short answer before rushing over the various sectors. And otherwise you just have to come back next week and the week after that because we have so much to talk about. Um, let me go really, ah, what do you mean by unadjusted chart? The, uh, the data sets on stock charts are dividend adjusted, which means that they are backfilled. So if a, if a stock uh, issues a dividend, then the history will be adjusted for that dividend. And you will see, and the, the best way you can see it, if you bring up like uh, sectors like uh, XLRE or VNQ, and uh, unadjusted tickers are the ones that start with an underscore. So if you bring up those two charts, you will see what I mean. Uh, IEF was one of the examples. IEF unadjusted is pushing against resistance, adjusted, broke out a while ago. And that's all because of that, um, uh, all because of that, uh, take that, share. Let me do it right here, XLRE. LRE, thank you very much. Yes, this one. You will see that here. And if I do underscore XLRE, you will see a completely different picture. That, that level doesn't show very well. Um, we need to wrap up. I uh, I am so sorry. This is my uh, this is my first time. I really wanted to bring all your questions in. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Rachel. Can you save those questions, and I will address them in my next article. And I'll, I'll promise to uh, address those questions in in the um, in the Slido chat. So don't throw them away. Save them. Send them to me, and I'll write about it. No problem, Julius. So. There you go. I need to uh, to start wrapping up. We need to go over the um, over the sectors here. Uh, right now, utilities and real estate. We saw real estate as an asset class. Here it is a sector that is the one that is shooting up to uh, to the top right hand quarter and into leading, together with staples. That sort of all ties in with a more defensive approach. That all ties in with a stock market hitting resistance and not being able to push higher. If I bring in the utilities chart here, there you go. That is looking super nice. That's doing really well together with the um, XLRE. And that's the one that we just had. Also a very nice uptrend. And then XLP is the one right there. And I could tell you all about long tails and short tails, and we'll do that over time. Just make sure that you uh, tune back in to the show, and um, we'll get that going. I need to do XLP. So here's your staples, typical, typical uh, defensive sector, all doing very well. Um, if you look at the monthly charts, that's one of the things I, you know, this is one of the things where you prepare for like six to eight, eight weeks for a show, and you have a ton of ideas in your hat, what you're going to show people. And then when push comes to shove, you just don't have enough time to work your way through all that. Uh, in a way, it's bad news because I didn't show you everything that I wanted to show you this week. Uh, but the good news is that I got a lot more material to share with you next week and, and in all the weeks after that. And I am learning together with you how much time I need to spend on, on the various subjects of the show. So um, please keep all the uh, comments going. I'll monitor the chat. I'll monitor my email. Some of you who have uh, written to me know that I'm answering most of the questions. I would love to thank you for uh, being here with this premiere of S Sector Spotlight. And I really hope that you'll be back all uh, next week, Tuesday, every Tuesday, Sector Spotlight. Thank you very much.